Okay, welcome everyone. Um, I'm Zeno Kova, and uh, we're going to talk about binaries a lot over the next couple of days. It's really going to be drilling a ton of detail into your head. My classes are very much firehose style teaching, but you're lucky because this is the first class which actually isn't just a you know ton of lecturing with a little bit of labs. We have actually a game this time that helps reinforce the material, gives you hands-on experience with using the tools in order to go fi figure out the information about binaries. <clears throat> so uh, so this will be quite a bit more fun than the previous version. This, the, the previous version of this class was literally almost entirely lecture, and now we at least break it up. I'll teach you one thing, we'll go and we'll run this game on it, and then uh, teach you another thing. So uh, as with all my classes, this is going to be released uh, Public released, it's going to be uh, Creative Commons so other people can take the slides or use them in presentations. Literally, I don't care if people just, you know, take the material and go off and get paid to teach it somewhere else. I just ask that, uh, you know, people give credit where credit's due and if you take the material and adapt it, that you share it so other people can use it. So for context of where you are in the larger scope of things, <coughs> I see a lot of new faces here who aren't... Uh, necessarily involved with the School of SOC classes this year. So if you just, you know, saw the announcement and based on that you said, hey, that sounds interesting, this is just to let you know that actually this class fits into a much broader curriculum. And so in particular, uh, this year was a little weird in terms of the ordering of classes just because we were trying to, uh, trying to shoehorn things in for this uh, larger School of SOC curriculum, which is much more focused on uh, people who work in security operations centers. So this year, Life of Binaries is being taught before the intro x86 class. You'll see why you probably would have liked to have the x86 class before uh, when we get to the virus lab and the Packer lab, especially the virus lab. Uh, that'll be kind of at the end. It'll be that um, you'll see a lot of, you know, assembly implementing particular features, parsing through particular data structures that we're, we're going to be talking about in this class. So. Uh, it should be fine. I'm, I'm you know, this year I'm assuming that uh, people haven't necessarily or don't necessarily have uh, x86 knowledge, so I'll just kind of explain things at a high level. But if you do have it, it'll be better to go back through and read the, the virus uh, example on your own later as well. But so this is uh, some of the malware classes that we have. Uh, the, uh, I think some of you may have taken the dynamic malware analysis class. First year was offered this year. We've actually got a document analysis class that's sort of underway. We've got a person who's provisionally committed to doing it. He's just got uh, he's got other things interfering uh, with him nailing that down. So we're hoping to get that in late spring, basically, but no guarantees there. And then uh, this year, well, the reverse engineering and malware analysis, uh, malware static analysis classes are going to be taught by Frank Kluzny. Uh, Kluzny and uh, he'll be taking over from Matt Briggs, who went off and got a job doing paid training for other people. So. Um, and then just these classes have, um, sometimes they fit into only one curriculum, sometimes they fit into many. The x86 class fits into many more than the Life of Binaries. Life of Binaries also, there's this sort of more trusted computing side of, uh, researchy side of things that I'm involved with as well, and so we're trying to build up classes on things like TXT and, and BIOS and real mode and things like that. So uh, we're working on those as well. But, but the intro to trusted computing class, um, we're actually in the, the process of editing the videos for that right now, so that'll be publicly available soon. The virtualization class, unfortunately, we didn't get enough uh, attendance because we tried to expand it to three days and uh, weren't able to get enough attendance there. So it'll be rescheduled for uh, probably late in the spring again and we're going to cut it back to two days again. Hopefully we'll get more people taking it. All right, so this is what you're going to learn in this class. This is a sort of a famous picture by Aero Carrera. Uh, it's kind of just breaking down all the sort of data structures. So, uh, you know, just like in the inter intermediate x86 class, we got, you know, big picture of here's everything we're going to dig into. So obviously this is madness, but this is life of binaries! There you go. I, I messed up the, this is intro x intermediate x86. Yeah, I did it again for the other class. But I'd see later on when I'm going to have like 
nice little clip show where I pull out my uppercuts and things like that that I do in the, in the various classes, shouting at people. Anyways, all right, so introductions kind of about me. I finally figured out, so previously I, on my about me slide I said, you know, I'm a generalist, not a specialist, but it's hard to, hard to argue that when I have increasing detailed knowledge in specialty areas. So I finally found something that I like that sort of describes me better. Um, there's this notion of a T-shaped employee. And so you're broad, you have a lot of general knowledge. So you know I haven't been doing lots of stuff with network security, but still, back in the day, I read all my RFCs and you know I know the details of you know IPv6, multicast, and things like that. So got a lot of broad knowledge, but increasingly I've been you know specializing in one area. And I think this is you know a very good thing to aspire to basically. You want to at least know what's going on in a lot of different areas, but then you become specialized in one area. This picture is from the uh, from the Valve employee handbook. Valve are the people behind Steam, the game uh, game, I don't know if you call it game engine, more like game portal I guess these days. Um, you know, people behind Portal, behind Half-Life, things like that. They have an employee handbook. It's a really good read. You should check it out. I think the citation's in the notes section. Uh, they talk about how at, at uh, Valve, they, they look for these T-shaped employees and they, they have a very flat uh, organizational structure so they don't like, you know, have managers and then, and then engineers. Basically, it's a bunch of people, they self-organize around projects where if you can convince your colleagues that, you know, this is a good idea and they should work on it, then they all get together on it. And so they look for T-shaped employees because you know, when you get 10 people on a project and one of them's deep in this area, one of them's deep in that area, and one of them's deep in that area, you know, you overall have a lot of uh, deep expertise. You have at least one person who's, who's good at everything. So, so this is more uh, what, I'm, what I think uh, describes me these days and what I aspire to more. <clears throat> the funny thing is um, I'm basically a lifelong Mac person and I had to learn Windows for work. So this material that we're going to be talking about today, it's basically something I had to learn for a project where I was looking into creating a packer. And um, excuse me. so I was working on a project where I had to create a packer for Windows. And so that required you know, digging down into the Windows P file format. Then we had to port it to Linux, and that required digging down into the ELF format. And so uh, it's basically just once I learned this knowledge for this one project, I found it ended up being valuable for other projects, and that's why I wanted to make a class on it, because I think it's uh, useful for malware people. It's useful for, you know, and where I use it these days is on system measurement, basically, so measuring binaries and memory. If you know how the PE structure is formatted, you can pull out the chunks of memory based on what they would have looked like on disk and then measure them. So it's just uh, knowledge that uh, has found a lot of different uses for me. All right, so now we're going to do uh, introductions. All right, excellent. Good to hear. So I should even say, you know, my own coverage of the uh, compiler topics. My own coverage of the compiler topics was basically um, more from, so I actually hadn't had a compilers class, but I had had all the uh, automata theory and things like that, parsing context-free grammars, and you know that was enough to to cover the majority of the material. But I really was more interested in the part where it spits out assembly, and so I was disappointed when I had seen that the majority of compiler classes didn't actually get to that place. All right, so that agenda is no longer accurate. Um, <clears throat> So the big thing is make sure you ask your questions when you have them. And you'll especially see on the game that we play, uh, you definitely have to ask questions. Though there, there's the potential for bugs. The previous class got to do lots of beta testing and lots of lots and lots of bugs on the game for the last class. So make sure you ask questions on the material as well as uh, when you're trying to understand the material by, by going through the game. It's a good time to reiterate it as well. I find that uh, people who are, you know, check, can't tear themselves away from the email, they're going to be the ones who uh, are not actually absorbing this material. As I said, it's going to be kind of fire hose style. It's going to cover a lot of information uh, in a lot of depth. So if, if you're you know, multitasking, especially this is a warning to the guys on BBcast, 
I know that you know when, when you've got just one window up, it's tempting to, to flop over to the uh, email client, but but that's basically the leading cause of failure of my classes. So, and I can see failure. And the nice thing about this game is it shows me failure very clearly. I'll show you a picture of failure later. So, all right. So we don't vote on the class schedule anymore because of the benevolent dictator clause. I'm going to try to go for two hours here at the beginning when you still have energy. Then we're going to take a 10 minute break. Then uh, we'll do one and a half hours to lunch. And you know, take a one hour lunch and then one hour or five minute breaks every after that. But at least now it's not like one hour of straight lecturing. It'll be one hour with interspersed games. So. All right, so as I said before, the intention of this class was to cover basically starting from source code all the way through running binaries. That still is the intention. If I could, you know, it's just the nature of things here at Miner that, you know, three day classes are much harder to get people in for. You know, people can't pull themselves away for that long. So, so someday I'm going to teach the real three day class where we do get to go into all the compiler stuff and then all the P and then all the ALF and then some more Mongo. But, uh, but this, the intent really is to show, you know, the full life cycle of the program. And so, as I said, you know, this has been useful for me. Um, you know, part of it was saying, when I, when I was first thinking of this, it was for this Packer project, like I was saying. And part of it was like, okay, can we get the next people who are going to work this, or the people who are going to maintain this software, can we get them the knowledge so that they can continue on with this much faster? You know, it took us a lot of time, people who were working on it. You know, it took us a lot of time reading a bunch of documents, and so how can we optimize this uh, knowledge transfer, basically? So this this class will have relevance for, for the type of areas that were already sort of indicated. Some of it, like the trusted computing stuff, has to do with measurement, and that's more on the defensive side. Some of it's more on the offensive side, things like you know understanding DLL injection and, and uh, viruses and uh, packed programs, etc. And I already said that. All right. So, right when I was talking about the full life cycle of uh, binaries, what I was talking about was, you know, you have source code. We're going to assume it's a C language. You've got many different .C files. You feed them into a compiler, and what you get out is actually many different object files. So the object files are basically just the compiler saying, for this piece of source code, I'm going to take it. I'm going to parse it. I'm going to spit out some assembly. I'm going to slice that assembly. Even here at this object file form, uh, stage, we have, uh, it's typically will be using the binary format. So these object files will be ELF files. These object files will be P files. They're not something that you can just double click on and execute because they're each a piece of the program, right? Just like each source code file is a piece of the program. So they're each a uh, independent piece of the program and so what happens then is you take all the object files and you feed them into the linker. And so each of the object files will have some code, some data, and some references to other code and data that it maybe needs to access. And so the linker's job is to basically splice all these things together into one well-formed binary. And so then now when we're thinking more about runtime, when you have a binary, you double click on it, you execute it at the command line. The binary is then uh, processed by the OS loader and the dynamic linker. And so loader, linker kind of together here at this point. Uh, dynamic linker basically means runtime linker. And so what happens then is the binary, after having been spliced together from all these object files, has any references to external libraries and things like that. So when you use printf, you're you know, referencing a standard C library. You're not re-implementing all the code in order to you know, print characters to the screen. So you use printf, the linker says, okay, it looks like you didn't define anything called printf anywhere in here. Oh, okay, you're looking for printf in some other library. And then it marks down in your binary, this person needs printf from this library. And later on, when the loader is executing your program, it's going to say, okay, which libraries does this thing import functions from? Okay, standard C, and, you know, the, uh, between Linux and Windows. I won't even say other examples. So you're importing libraries from, from uh, external to the binary. And so then the loader takes and it, it loads it into memory and you get a running program. It just resolves all the uh, outstanding references to code and data. It can be you know, importing uh, data that's exported by other things as well. And so finally we get a running program. And the running program, oh, is it doing it? There we go. The running program will kill us all. All right. 
So, then, there we go. So this is what we would have um, basically been go going into. We would have went down into each of these, the lexical analysis, syntax analysis, and so forth. Um, so this is just, you know, the process between source code and object file. There's a lot of subcomponents to that. There's optimizations. There's uh, different phases of analysis of it. But, uh, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to cover that today. So again, just to give you sort of a notional um, view of things, the linker, like I said, you have two object files spit out by the previous process. Uh, they have some headers, because these, as I said, they're well-formed P binaries. They're well-formed uh, ELF binaries. So you've got your typical binary format headers, and then you've got things like code and data and so forth. And as I said, the linker's job is just to put them all together. In the dynamic malware class, you probably actually saw a better slide than this, where, where it showed like the dot .text sections of everybody goes together and the dot .data sections where everybody goes together. Right, and then so at runtime, the output of that was this well-formed binary which has code and data and it has these imports and that's sort of the critical outstanding thing. So at runtime, uh, you try to run wikisuite.app.exe, that gets loaded into memory. It has its own particular memory space that's isolated from other memory spaces with its own stack, its own heap, and then its own copies of uh, other libraries mapped into its memory. If these copies already existed in some other process's memory, the operating system will generally just try to share those between the different processes. So, so this is the virtual memory space of wickedsuiteapp.exe, but off to the side there'll be Notepad, and off to the side there'll be Explorer. And so the operating system's job is to kind of you know use memory efficiently. So if it's already got libc mapped into somebody else's memory, all it'll do is take this virtual memory and point it at the same physical memory that is mapped by some other process. And that's uh, how the operating system will efficiently use memory. 